So for example, let's do solve this equation here right now, right? So when you want to solve something like this, where you have two x terms, they're different powers, so you can't combine them. What you want to do is take out a GCF from both of them. GCF meaning greatest common factor. So what's similar between both of these? Well, this contains only one x. This contains two x's. That's what x squared means. So you can take out an x from both of them. You couldn't take out an x squared because that doesn't have two x's. You can only take out the basically supply chain. I think what, what's it called? Uh, the, the weakest link in the chain, right? And this is the smallest link in the chain. So you can't take out anything more than this. So right now you can factor out an x. Okay. Now you took out an x from this. So basically what you're doing, you're going 2x squared divided by x. 1x kills 1x. So you've got 2x here. And x divided by x gives you 1. Right? And that's how you you know, isolate this into one thing, multiply it to another thing to give you zero. And as we talked about before, if two things multiply them together to give you zero, then all you do is set each one equal to zero. So x is equal to zero, 2x plus 1 is equal to zero. You're solving for both of them equaling zero because you don't know which one equals zero, so you're going to assume they both equal zero. So this is just a straight up answer, x equals zero. Over here, this becomes 2x is equal to negative 1, divide by 2, divide by 2, so x is equal to negative 1 over 2, and this, that's your second solution. And for those who have already, you know, talked about quadratic equations, x equals 0 and x equals negative 1 over 2 is where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So if you're looking at this, you would go x equals 0 and x equals negative a half. If that's negative 1, that's negative a half. That's where the parabola crosses the x-axis. And we know this parabola opens up because the number here is positive. So, this is what our problem is going to look like. We don't know how far down it goes. If you want to find out how far down it goes, uh, all you do, you take the average of these two numbers, negative 1 over 2 plus 0, divided by 2 is going to give you a negative a half, negative a quarter, and to find out the vertex of this parabola, all you do, you, you, know, you already have the x value on it, negative a quarter, and for the y value, you just plug it negative quarter here, and whatever that equals, that's your y value. Okay. And again, I've gone way too far here. This is just for those people who have already done quadratic equations that want to know what these terms represent. Okay. And these terms, whenever we're solving for, for, for something in mathematics, initially right now, all we're doing is acquiring the tools that we need to be able to apply you know, the information, right? Initially, when we learned how to add, we didn't go around, you know, calculating what something is going to cost us to buy, or you know, you know how much how much tax would be on something, or what a discount meant, or anything like this, right? All we did was learn how to add, right? This is the same thing. All we're learning right now is learning how to solve for a variable, and these are functions, and these solutions right here mean something. Later on, we're going to look at what they mean. Okay. Right now, it's really important for us to get this technique down to be able to do you know, different types of problems or solve different types of functions that are to the powers. What I've done so far is just taken it to the x squared term, right? What you can also do is have something like x to the power of 5 minus x cubed is equal to 0, right? Again, this is to a power of 5, but this is two terms that we can solve for. So what you do is, you take a look at this and say, what's the greatest common factor that you can take out of those? That's x to the power of 3. 3x three is there, 5x is there. So you can take out 3x's from both of them, right? Again, you can't take out 5x's because this doesn't have 5x's. You're going to the weakest link in the chain, right? And you're taking that out of the equation. So this becomes x cubed comes out. What do you multiply x cubed by to give you 2x to the power of 5? You multiply it by x squared. Minus, you already have an x cubed, so you have to have the spot. You reserve it by 1. Right? Whenever you do GCF, always remember, if you start off with two terms, you have to have two terms. A lot of people make a mistake 
when they say, oh, we took the x cubed out, so there's nothing here. It's just x cubed times x squared. Oops, I forgot the 2 by the way. So 2. They forget to put the 1. You have to reserve the spot. My basic, the, my analogy I use, and sort of seems to stick with people, is if you go to a movie theater with two people, right? If you go to a movie with your friend, and your friend goes to the washroom, do you still keep their spot or do you give it away, right? You have to keep the spot. Right? Your friend's still there. Just because they went to the washroom, they're going to come back at some point, right? So always remember, if you start off with two terms or multiple terms and you're taking out a GCF, you always have to have the same terms of whatever the GCF is that you took out. And again, right now we have two things that multiply together to give you zero. You set each one equal to zero. So x cubed is equal to zero and 2x squared minus 1 is equal to zero. So cube root, the, you take the cube root of this side to solve for x, right? The opposite of cube. So x is equal to zero. Oh, you have 2x squared is equal to 1. Uh, so so the solution is going to be x is equal to square root of 1 over 2. And that's partial answer. This is correct if you're in, in my part, in my area, or in my part of the world. This is correct answer if you're in grade 8 and 9. If you're in grade 10 or above, the square root of anything is always plus or minus. So this is actually plus or minus square root of 2. As far as I'm concerned, that would be a correct answer if, uh, if I was marking anything. If you only wrote down square root of, square root of a half, yeah, you would only get half marks. Square root of anything is always plus or minus because if you think about it, what you're looking for is, let's say you've got the square root of, let's say you've got the square root of 4, right? The way it works is this. Let's say you've got the square root of 4. What's the square root of 4? It's not just 2. It's plus or minus 2. Square root means you need two identical things to uh, multiply it together to give you, give, you the, give you this number. What are two identical things that multiply it together to give you four, right? It's two times two. Two times two gives you four. But you can also have negative two times negative two. Negative two times negative two gives you four. So square root of four is not just two. It's negative two as well. Always has two solutions. Square root of anything. So right now, for this question, we have... One answer, x is equal to zero, x is equal to positive a square root of a half, and x is equal to negative square root of a half. Okay. And those would be our three solutions. And just for those people who are um, who are who are, who have already gone into these types of functions, uh, polynomial functions and stuff like this, these points is where you cross the x-axis and to the power of 5, x to the power of 5, this means your function has 5 curves and 3 times it crosses the x-axis and it crosses the x-axis at 0, negative square root, uh, anyway, plus or minus square root of a half, right? If you were going to graph this, let's graph this real quick. So what we would have is, these are the solutions, x is equal to 0 square root of a half, negative square root of a half, and you were solving for this equation, right? And those were your solutions, and those are really where the function crosses the x-axis. If this was a function where your 0 is f of x, right? So f of x is your y-axis, and this is your x-axis x is equal to 0 is here, x is equal to square root of a, square root of a half is going to be here somewhere, and negative square root of a half is half is this, right? Now the way it works is this guy came to us from the cube root, x cubed is equal to 0. The way this works is cube root, uh, or x cubed, when you're graphing a function, it gives it a little curve. This is an odd power, positive in the front, so the function is going to look like this. Okay. This part is going to go up, this part is going to go down, and your solutions is where your function is going to cross 
the x-axis. So it would look something like this. Go up as wherever it would go up to. All you would do is take the average of these and punch them in. It's not going to be exact when it comes to higher degrees, okay, as, as, um, as it is with quadratic equations, but you're going to get an idea of where it goes. So this thing would come down. That was the cube root, so it's going to do a little twist. Again, it's going to do this, come back up, and up it goes. And that's what our function is going to look like, okay? Hopefully that's what it's going to look like. If you have a graphing calculator.